look, look at me. I'm the whoa, whoa, water What's up, good people? King Moron here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. We are 99,000. 535 people we're 465 that's right i can do math in my head you young people don't know nothing about any math i can do math in my head but we are that close to making it to 100,000 subscribers and um i got my man game time brian what's up game Yo, time? How are you, doing, man? you are scarily close to that century mark mark oh, that's God. awesome i'm so happy for you but like I know you, that's just going to be like a starting point. You, you're you going to get there and you go, okay, good. 200 is next. So, okay. I, But look, I just want to uh, say, man, that's impressive. As uh, long as yeah. it took to get here, I don't know I'll be alive yeah. to get to 200. Well, hey, listen, I'm closing in on only 98,000 more to catch you. There you go, man. Look, that's so, no time. But, but see, I tell you what, bro. So you're telling you me know, there's a chance. No, it took me four years to get to my first thousand. So you were at light speed in comparison to me, bro. You were yeah, at light well, speed. Well, I learned from the best, man. Well, we haven't talked since uh, the beginning of the league new year. And since that time, a few things have changed. We still them boys. We still, yeah, we still them boys not doing much. <laughs> so just want to check in with you. Um, I think tonight we're going to do something special. Um, I have no idea how long it's going to go. So I think I may take a little nap. I got to move some things to make my wife happy because, you know, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. But I think I'm going to take a nap because I think we're going to do something special tonight. And what I'll do with my nine o'clock live stream is we'll open it up for the channel members and we're just going to keep going. However long it takes to go from ninety nine thousand five hundred and thirty five to get to 100,000 because I want to be on live when it happens and I want to share it with my people. So I, I may be asleep. And I might need some of you guys to wake me up, but we'll see what happens. So, are you feeling better today than four days ago? Yes, I am. I am feeling better, Mark, for a multitude of reasons. And I'm Go sure on. we're going to get into them, but you know, I am feeling better. The sun does rise the next day. You know, what's the old saying? The sun rises, or the sun's, I don't know. I figured you yeah, would but, know. but the sun rising is messing with your allergies. Well, my allergies are off the charts bad. But that being said, I am feeling more and more encouraged with the Cowboys. Now, I'm not going to be all long range and how great we're going to be. It's just, I'm feeling a lot better about it, especially the Michael Kendricks signing. I've been getting a lot of blowback because my original thing was out oh, Michael Kendricks is shot. But oh, then when I actually did. You said that, huh? Well, oh. because, you know, I'm tired of bottom feeding. Mm. But when you looked into the player and we talked about it on, I don't know when we talked about it, but we talked about it. Uh, he had over 100 tackles yet again last 117 year. 117 so, and three and a half sacks. So for what we need. And we're not there to totally help him out, and we'll, you know, we'll get to that. But uh, he's going to have the green dot. He's going to be the Mike linebacker. He comes mm -hmm. into our team, which is sad, I know, as our best linebacker. Sorry, well, here, that's here's a fact. The thing, okay, for everybody, because we got a lot of Cowboy fans. It doesn't matter what we do at this point. It does not matter. Everybody's going to be mad. They're pissed off at him. But I'm actually going to say, uh, trying to connect the dots where – when Jerry was asked about our, uh, you know, our, our problems, our, um, boy, what do you call it? Jeez. Um, whatever problems and the uh, attitude, not attitude problems. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, a culture culture problems. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, if running the ball and stopping the run is a culture problem, then we do have a culture problem. And so to recognize that we do have a problem in those two areas, it was like, okay, light bulbs on now. The Cowboys, you, you, the thing is, if you spend all your money on one or two players, then you're going down the road with really bottom tier. And that's been one of the problems with the Cowboys is typically we draft some guys that are really good, top five players in their position. We pay them. And by the time you finish paying them, you've 
basically used up half of the salary cap. Right. Then you've got nothing left. You're getting just basically, you know, minimum payments. So I think their thinking was, listen, if we go and try and get Henry and he's going to be $10 million, even though we spent $10 million for Tony Pollard last year, I think the thinking is, is we need to spread this out and try and take care of this thing all the way around. I still think they'll sign a veteran back, but it'll be cheap. But I think that they're going to be using running back as a priority in the draft as long, and also offensive line. Getting Kendricks, I look at it and say, okay, you got Kendricks. If Overshone comes back healthy, which we don't know if he will or not from the ACL, but it was so early, he'll have a whole yeah, year yeah, yeah, yeah. to recover. Um, unlike Michael Gallup, who tore his, you know, in the playoffs and then, you know, was trying to play right then and there. So he's got more time to recover. So maybe he comes back. Damone Clark, maybe not having to be the only guy. Maybe they can use him better with Mike Zimmer, although I don't think that they're finished. To me, that's a good start. Yeah. Um, yeah, like my earlier comment regarding Michael Kendricks, what is going to help him is having a, a good line in front of him. So we're not done. We have a lot of work to do. Um, we're going to the draft in less than six weeks, and in order for us to draft properly, we still need to get another four or five players. Now, yeah. I, I mean, whether we're going to get those players before the draft, I don't know, but I know we need to get Hankins back that's number one. Mm -hmm. We have to have Hankins back. We he already are told that Mozzie's putting the weight on. You got to think he's going to offer you more, especially under a Mike Zimmer-led defense. I think it fits him better. He was already a big boy. But that's going to help Michael Kendricks and any linebacker mm -hmm. is if you could float at a ball um, more freely. Um, well, see, speaking of linebackers, yeah, what's that? we got to get to the, you know, go you can go ahead and well, today uh, the uh, Cowboys have cut, uh, failed physical, uh, Leighton Vander Esch. Yes. So um, it's kind of a sad story for the man, the Wolf Hunter. Um, he was so promising his rookie year, uh, but he came out of college with some risk uh, neck risks, and it's it's. Uh, He's had more than one issue with his neck. So it's I don't know, Mark. Maybe you would know more about this. Did they do this because it helps Leighton more financially? Because I was way, sure I was thinking Leighton was going to retire, and it never came. So well, it was almost like Dallas said, enough is enough. I, I, you know, I don't think it really was going to matter. I think his money was going to be his money. Um, it looks like it's 2.2 .2 savings. Two point two dead hit. Basically, that's right. what his his salary his hit was going to be four four three. So there was one million guaranteed right. money that was left on his contract. So he'll get one final payday, and we get you know two point one four seven million dollars there, which we can use every nickel we can get. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I feel bad for Layton, but we got to do what we got to do. Well, you know, he got to do what he got to do about making sure that he can he you know, can walk get paralyzed. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's something exactly. as a linebacker you can't play with is being a uh, you know having neck yeah. injuries. Um, Michael Gallup will be a post June first cut. Now, for everybody, to me in my mind, when people always talk about Dak taking up all the money and things, some people <laughs> will be happy that you know, okay, yeah, we just we're gonna get some more money out of Michael Gallup. But the thing is, is yes, we will get uh, some money out of Michael Gallup. We'll take a $4.3 million dead hit and we'll save nine and, a half, yeah. nine and a half million, but we'll end up having to pay that nine and a half million next year. Okay. Or eight, I'm sorry, eight, seven. I think it is. We'll eight, have well, I have it here. 8.7. Yeah. 8. Yes. Point, sorry, 8.7. Um, in 2025. In yep. 25. So you can put that on there along with Dak Prescott's 36. Um, and Layton's 2.2. Right. And it's so, just, I don't know if Zeke's off after this year. No, I mean, no, no I'm talking guess. about for next year. Next year already. So we're already looking at uh, what's going to be on there for next year. I so got 36 you. and uh, 8.7. So we're already 45 in the hole for next year. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was listening to somebody, and they were saying, "Well, that's why there's not going to be a DAC deal." It was, um, it was, uh, I think it was uh, Nick Eatman or it was Jeff Cavanaugh. But they were saying the deal's not going to get done because of all that dead money. Now, 
explain that to me because I was confused. Okay. I was under the impression that if they redid the deal, I know you push it down the road. Yeah. But can't no, no, you? No matter what. That 36 has to be accounted for right I, now. No, it doesn't. Okay, no. That 36. Not, I don't mean paid for, but it has to be accounted for. It doesn't go so, away. So here's the thing. What they did was they put two voidable years on Dak Prescott's contract. Okay. Okay. So what they did when they restructured one year, they put 36 in the first year. So technically, you still have the second year that you could put money into as it's currently oh, okay. constructed. I got you. So he's got 59 that's owed now and then 36, and I think they could probably spread it out over the two years or just go ahead and take it and be done with it. But here's you want to hear something interesting? Yes. Now, the Eagles are you know touting about you know how great a cap shape they are right now and you know how we're in cap hell right now, right? So when we look at this with all the moves, and I'm sure it's not completely updated yet, but at some point, somewhere around $38 million is what the Eagles have right now still to spend, right? We have 2.2 still listed, so this is probably from yesterday before the moves have been made. Here's where it gets to be interesting. If we go out to 2025, we actually have currently, even with Dak Prescott's $36 million hit, $97 Ninety-seven million dollars in cap space. Now I know we got okay. to do. We got to do. This is projection, but now you got to do Dax deal. You got to do CD's, CDs deal. And Micah's so, deal. And Micah's deal. Now, but thirty-six of that's already baked into Dak Prescott's. So basically, when you do an if you do an extension for Dak, you're going to go ahead and make the first year kind of more cap friendly and kick some of that right. money down the road. So his deal may not be much more than what that cap is, is right now. Right. See, that's what I'm that saying. Deal. So people who don't know, you shouldn't really be talking about it because there's, oh, there's no way yeah. they're going to do it. So obviously they can redo, you know, you know, right. do a deal with him. Right. So, but, you know, there's stuff that we need to do, Mark, and – um well, but, Hankins but, and Gilmore, that's here, the issue the, I have. Here's the thing. So the question you, uh, you you look at in the Cowboys, ultimately, if they do Dak's deal and extend it out, if they get a couple more avoidable years, and basically that's what most teams are doing. Yeah. Um, the difference oh, the difference <clears throat> being is I was saying that we have uh, $97 million, right? The Eagles, on the other hand, they drop down to $14 million for what's already accounted for for next year. So think about that for a second. Now, again, we have to do something with Dak, or even if you let Dak walk, that's, right. Dak's not going to change it. It's, it's not going to get any worse by doing Dak's contract for next year. You do CD, okay, so CD's a $17 million hit now. Now, even if it goes up, it's not, not going to go up by more than $10 million for the following year, right? So no, there yeah. you go. So it's you know, going to go down. You're going to save. You're going to you save on that. You know, the same thing yeah. with Micahs and stuff like that. And that's before we start adding in how much the cap will go up and right. which players are going to get cut and so on. Because I don't know that the Cowboys will keep Cooper Rush and Trey Lance. See, I think they're going to always keep a third quarterback with the new quarterback rules. Who who that is? I don't know how much is, cheaper okay, you can get. So you're going to spend. Uh, they will two point eight for Cooper, and you're going to spend, you know, five and a half five for, point five for yeah. Trey Lance. Yeah. yeah, they will. That's what they will because okay. the rules allow you. They don't want to be in a situation where emergency quarterback can play. You know, they don't want that. So, in my point, in my opinion, they probably will. But I don't. It doesn't have to be Lance and Cooper. Mm-hmm. It could be Cooper Rush and. Uh, a young one, or you know, you know what I mean. Don't have to be Trey Lance. Uh, I'm still hoping upon hope that we could flip him for something. Well, here's uh, where it's kind of interesting because I was sitting here looking at Eagles. Just traded. Uh, did you see who the Eagles traded for? They traded for uh, Pittsburgh. State. Little hands, yeah. Uh, little hands now, out of Pittsburgh. Do you know what the compensation was for that? Um, yeah, it was it was a convoluted thing where Eagles gave up a third, but got a fourth back. Um, and then, the, yeah, Eagles gave up their third, but they got Pittsburgh's fourth this year. And then next okay, year, right. Eagles have yeah. to give them two, uh, two seventh round picks. So okay. it was not that much. But again, he's in his third year, hasn't done much. They obviously weren't too enamored with him if they're going to let's ride with Russell's friggin' Wilson. Yeah. How, I mean, how good could he be? Sorry, Eagles fans. I'm not trying to crap on you, but. 
if you're going to put all your hopes in Russell Wilson's ba- uh, Wilson's basket, you got some problems. So, well, uh, uh, you know what? I'll go back to that in a second. But, That's right. But Sam Howe, okay, so Sam Howe got traded to Seattle. Seattle, yeah. Okay, they took Howe, their fourth and their sixth, and they get back Seattle's third mm. and their fifth. Yes, fourth okay. and a sixth for a third so, and a fifth, and, yes. And Zach Wilson looks like he's going to be traded as well. So as you're sitting there seeing the compensation that's out there, how come nobody's called about Trey Lance? Yeah, you would think they would have. You would have think that they would have. It's not like there's a lot of tape on him. He's only played in how many games? A handful of games Four in games. his career before he got Four injured? Games. so Or started, I should say. Started. So, uh, yeah, uh, interesting, interesting. So we'll see. Um, you know, I've been saying that Oso Odigizua, I don't know that he fits in Zimmer's plan. He's in a final year of a deal. To me, that's a trade candidate, but maybe not. He's only maybe a not. dollar hit. Um, but it's not so much that, but if you can get a decent, if you can get a fourth round pick for Oso or a fifth round pick, you know, and if, you, if he's not in your plans long term, if he's not going to fit the Zimmer mold where he's a smaller guy mm-hmm. uh and it's it, he, you know he tends to uh, tail off every year so you know you come game 12 13 14 and so on he's nowhere to be found he's so i don't they have to figure out what's going on with him and you know decide whether they want to keep him he actually has value so but yes i do like to get back to your like original question i feel a lot better now, we're still waiting for the running back position to unfold. Um, what are we going to do? I don't want A.J. Dillon. So it's like, okay, give me Dante Foreman. I'll take him. Uh, I told you about J.K. Dobbins. I don't know where he is coming back from his ACL. We need some sort of veteran. Um, I said I would like to have on, Zeke back. I don't know uh, your opinion on that. I was going to ask you, you know, of course, the rumors that Tyron Smith could be coming back. Uh, or uh, that would be a great move. Where um, we're sitting now, Mark, think about it. Tyron Smith coming back, okay, if you can get him on a on like a two year deal similar to what he's been doing. I say two million I mean a two year, sixteen million, fully guaranteed. Mm-hmm. I know that's not what he wants, but that's sixteen million guaranteed over two years. It's eight million a year. It's not as ten or twelve that he wants, but it's guaranteed. I don't know if I'll take that, but if you could do something like that, now you go into the draft, Mark. Mm-hmm. See, here's the deal. Everybody's just assuming that we're going to go with offensive left tackle with our number one pick. I don't think we're going center with the first pick anymore. I just don't. There's too many other centers that they like, and they have other needs. So they have Brock Hoffman that could start. I think they're going center later. But there's only a, maybe two or three real absolute left tackles in the first round. Everybody else has played right tackle in college, and it's a projection to move them over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can bring back a Tyron Smith, Mm -hmm. now you could literally draft best player available. And I don't want to scare you, Mark, but if it's a wide receiver, it's a wide receiver. It, okay. And there's a couple of them that could fall to us. And because of all the ridiculousness with all the quarterbacks that are going to be taken, you know, it's it's crazy. All the all the wide receivers, somebody's going to fall to us. And if we had Tyron, that would allow us not to necessarily have to you know, put a square peg in a round hole. Okay. I am going to try and blow your, your, your mind here. On your receiver. Let me find where where are they? All right. Currently, the Buffalo Bills have been doing bloodletting. Yes. They are down to you know they are now at sixteen million in cap space. Okay. They have got the roster. Here's the thing. Yes. You're, they they restructured Josh Allen to get down because he had a forty seven million dollar cap hit, so they took seventeen million of that. That's how they got basically above board. So his cap number is thirty million. Okay. Yes. Here's the thing that's interesting is they did not restructure Diggs. Ooh. See Diggs, you could have restructured and gotten yourself because he's a twenty seven point eight million dollar cap hit. Ooh. 
Ooh, okay. ouch. He, of course, there's two things you can count on every offseason. One, Zeke Elliott workout videos. Wow. And Get two, ahead. Stephon Diggs, you know, doing some tweets and being cryptic about not being happy. Right? But if you're Buffalo right now, who in the middle of the season said, we need to run the football, changed offensive coordinators, and started running the football, and then turned your season around, you may look at Stefan Diggs and say, this guy's always a pain in the ass. He's real expensive. Now, you don't want to cut him, because then it's a $31 million uh, dead money right now. If you make him a post-June 1st cut, you're going to save uh, $19 million, right? Ooh, basically. What? Well, no, but basically that's going to spread it out over two seasons. Mm, okay. okay. So, hypothetically, l- listen to me now. This is where it gets really, to be really interesting, where I'm trying to connect the dots, and you tell me if I'm crazy. If you make him a post-June 1st trade, so they're not going to be in a rush to trade him, those same numbers are in effect. You still get your $19 million. Okay. Right. Right. And at least you get some draft capital for the future. So then you have the dead money hit of only eight million dollars this year, but you get nineteen million after June first. Right, right. Stefan Diggs to the Cowboys, and here's how it could work. Michael Gallup gets cut. June first money, nine and a half million dollars. Right. You've got Ooh, that, extra, like that extra money like right it. there. It's spicy. you got that extra money right there. It's not a draft pick for this year. It's a draft pick for next year. Right, exactly. And we're getting, as of now, we're looking at four comp picks as of right now. Right. So <laughs> you've got all these extra picks that you're going to get? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. That's, that's a way it could work. You know what I'm saying? Well, I didn't know you were going there, but yes, exactly. And I would love that. And I'm all in on that. So let's let's do that. Come on, Buffalo, help us out. You know he wants to come here. He'll be able to basically pick and, where he wants we'll to see, go. And that's pretty where, much. Could, could you and, and think about the marketing standpoint? Digs and mm. digs. Okay, I could see Mike Mosh making the digs and digs jerseys and everything else. Yep. You know, and this will be the last wow. year of Brandon Cooks. He slides into that spot. Yeah. But you know, you'll have one year of both of them. You know. That would be the best. And now you're talking about not drafting a receiver at all. I would be good with gives, that. Gives, that would, that would be the way you, to go. Then yes. it gives you another spot. Because, see, doing it that way, it's not costing you a draft pick this year. And you know look I mean? at all the value. There is no value in players anymore. Mm-mm. You're not getting anything. I mean, look at – I mean, you may have to pay them, but as far as draft capital, you don't – People want their draft picks, so you don't have to give up anything high. Right. Probably a fifth round pick. There you go. Maybe well, a fourth, but even, even, you know. now look, even if it was a third round, if you're gonna tell me I could get Stefan Diggs in here for a third round for the following year, where we might yeah. be blowing it up anyway, pff, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Okay? Especially me, when you're getting the, four extra me, picks. Doing that, yeah. that's an all in move. That would well, yeah, and, and see if you did something like that between that. See, and now you're getting me excited, and then they'll not oh, do it. Of course, yeah, they won't I'm, do it. They won't yeah. do it. But I'm just well, saying, they might do it. But that's they one of those ones it. that would make sense for it, both. Teams. It actually does make sense on a lot of levels. Mm-hmm. You know, so yes, I'm. I mean, I like it, but I am feeling more upbeat as we approach the draft. But they have work to do. They oh, need yeah. to get. You know, Stephen Jones. Supposedly he was never on vacation. It was just the dad, but I don't buy it. Um, okay. You know, they they need to get their act together. Oh, they always need the f- to get their, they always need to get their act together. But yeah, but I mean, they need to sign some players before the draft to allow us to do smart things and not needy things. Uh, so yeah, I'm feeling better. Right, feeling you know, and, and for everybody that that's that's like screw this, we suck. You know, we did win 12 games. I know we've lost some players, but th- I, I don't know too many Cowboy fans that are saying that, you know, we can't live without Biotis. Right? You know, yeah. Tony Pollard, you know, as Doc Walker would say, I can lose. If I lose with you, I can lose without you. I don't know that Tony Pollard was, you know, the be-all, end-all or Rico. Okay? I think Rico. we need we need to upgrade those. And looking across the board in our defensive line, Navelle Gallimore since he hyperextended his elbow, has not been that good. 
Dorrance Armstrong has benefited from being a rotational player and having Micah Parsons getting triple team on the other side. And the same thing with Dante Fowler. These guys are part-time role players. So, you know, maybe Sam Williams steps up, or I still kind of like the idea of saying, let's try and make him a run-stopping linebacker. That's still my in the back of my yeah. head. I would love to experiment with That's one of the things the Cowboys like doing is experimenting. Um, but maybe Sam Williams starts taking another step, or maybe you end up getting another pass rusher later. There are going to be other players that are going to be available, and I think that Mike Zimmer has a plan – and the when you look at the philosophy of Dan Quinn telling Mozzie Smith, who the one thing Mozzie could do is stop the run, you need to lose 40 pounds, that's not going to be Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer believes in the big fat guy. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, they, they, maybe we're going to be getting the type of guys that are going to work in his defense, and maybe we'll be further ahead than you should be changing uh, schemes. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm looking at the positives, people. Again, we haven't lost anybody that I didn't really care about losing, and we're, we need to re- retain a couple people. But yes, I mean, I think things are looking brighter. It looks like that, you know, we have a plan. But there's stuff that needs to be done. It's just I need the owner to keep his mouth shut next time. Uh, stop talking because anything that comes out of your mouth is hogwash. All in was ridiculous. Yep. All right. So that being said, man, I am going to go ahead and get this stuff moved downstairs, and I'll be doing my live. Get a hope. nappy in. Uh, well, we're gonna try. I got a lot of shit to move, and it's you ain't napping. It's it's two hours from now. You know, I'll just get a big pot of coffee ready and uh, make some iced yeah. coffee and stuff for the night. But definitely check out my man Game Time. We got to get him over two thousand, and uh, we want to get him over twenty. I'm close. Twenty five hundred before we go to the draft, and we're a little over a month. I mean, what's the fifteen? Yeah. Yeah, wow. we're like 38 days or something. Wow, time is flying. It is literally like 75 degrees. I've got the uh, windows open and the, the curtains are blowing and things. It feels so nice. Spring is definitely in the Beautiful, air. beautiful. All right, everybody. We will see you later. Peace. Late. Okay. <laughs>